Today on JTV, we're going to talk about Artesia, the floral spa. It's a great new floral foam from the Floracraft Corporation. We're going to talk about all the different ways that you can use it and some little known facts about floral foam itself. We want to make sure that everybody's working with it correctly and we also want to show you some secret tips about what you can do to make your flower shop a little more productive and a little more profitable. So we all know about soaking foam. And we all like to believe that we soak foam properly all the time. But let's just go through those steps so that I can make sure that you know exactly how you should do it every time. So, I've got some water here. We know that water is a key ingredient to soaking our foam. But at the same time, so is our floral nutrient. So we have to make sure that we're using the appropriate floral nutrient. This is chrysal, and we're going to add that to our water. So we want to make sure that we add the proper amount. In another webisode, we're going to talk about floral nutrients and tell you exactly why it's so important to measure. But we have to make sure that the proper amount is in there. I've got eight quarts of water in here, so I need four pumps of Formula 2 to make sure I have the appropriate amount. That's very important. So we'll grab a brick, we lay it on top of the water, and we allow it to float soak. Now I know you guys are busy, and you're looking for as much time saving as you possibly can but you never push the foam down. You need to make sure that it has the ability to float soak and soak up naturally. It's very important. So in the meantime, you can go grab a cookie or maybe call your friend while you're waiting for that to soak. It only takes about 30 seconds. I know you're busy, but you're never too busy to let it float soak. When we look at our instant blocks, we're gonna notice that there's holes on the back side. When we float soak with instant, those holes allow the water to get inside the block a little bit faster. But float soaking is still extremely important even when using instant foam. So we've got this one that's been properly hydrated. We'll set that over here. Now I'll grab another one. And all too frequently I see this happening out on the floral design circuit. But we shove it under there and we wait for those bubbles to stop and we think that we're hurrying up and we've got that all taken care of because we have to hurry, hurry, hurry and get that foam soaked. Well, here's where the real problem comes in. If we split this one in half, we're going to see we're not properly hydrated. In this case, we've got hydrated foam. The water goes all the way through. When our stem goes into the center of this block of foam, it's extremely important that there's a water source inside there. Here, it's just going to be sucking air. That's a horrible thing for it to do. So, always important, float soak your foam. Now that we've learned about soaking, let's talk about floral insertion. It's extremely important that we make sure our flowers are inserted into the foam correctly. So, let's take one of these beautiful Euphoria roses, for example. We're gonna cut that flower. And we're gonna place it into our foam. We make sure that we press down the entire time we don't want to pull that flower back up after we've stuck it into the foam. That's really bad behavior because then there's an air pocket inside. We can take our foam knife and we're able to see exactly what happens when we place a rose down inside there. We like to see that the artesia is sticking right to the end of that flower itself. And at the same time, if we pull it back up, we suddenly have an air pocket. So we want to make sure that that flower is forced down into that foam and remains in that position all the time. So moving flowers isn't a problem. It's just pulling them back and forth. We also never want to go back down inside a hole that we've already pre-inserted because there's going to be an air pocket trapped inside. So just remember to choose a new place to place your flower in the foam each time. You know, a really important floral innovation was the fact that all of the foam manufacturers started printing three lines. So now as florists, we can take our foam knife and we can divide this up in thirds. Seems kind of simple, but it is fun to know that you're always guaranteed a three cut out of your foam using those lines. You know, by the way, I always have a secret tool that I like. This is a special foam knife that was designed by my friend Johnny Childers. It has an extra long blade and also has a flange on the end so you can cut and bevel exactly through an entire block of foam. It's longer than a design knife and it gives you a fresh clean cut. It's also really easy to come back and bevel the sides of your foam. You know, I learned a lot from Johnny Childers when I lived in Atlanta and this is one of the things that a true product development person loves to see. 
Let's talk about a secret of floral design that can happen every day in your store. This is a third of block of foam, and we place it into our design bowl. We sometimes think we're ready to design at that point, but not really. It's important that we go back and bevel the sides of the foam. We're cutting off at about a 45 degree angle on all four sides of the foam. This allows us to make cleaner insertions and it's easier for us to create a beautiful round bouquet. Let me show you. We've got some beautiful Esperanza roses and we're going to be inserting them into our bouquet to help create something round. When we place that into the beveled area, it's much easier for us to go in there rather than working on two square sides. So our rounded arrangement becomes very, very easy because of the bevel itself. You can see here that that rounded form works so easy and so quickly by using the beveled foam. Now let's talk about securing the foam in the container. That can be a huge time saver and a very valuable tip for you at holiday time. We simply can take our dry foam, cut a third of that off, and come over to our hot glue pan. It's really important for us to have hot pan melt glue that's about the consistency of taffy. We're gonna take our dry foam, place it in the glue itself, and place it directly in to our utility container. That way, the glue and the foam adhere directly to the container. We come back, we bevel our sides, and this guy's ready to soak. It can wait for a day, it can wait for a week, it can wait for a month, or it can go right into the water right now because the water itself will cool the glue and allow it to be ready to be used. You know, it's pretty simple because it holds really well. And you don't have to worry about strap and tape across the top, and now your foam's not encumbered by running into tape as you work with it too. So it's a great method for you to use. So now that we know about this, let's check out some shapes that they make, especially for you at Artesia. A lot of us are used to using spheres. They're one of the most popular items that are out there right now. When we work with spheres, it's extremely important for us to think about reinforcing that. Because as we place one stem inside that sphere and three of those stems meet on the inside, it could pop a section out of this. That's when we grab our good old friend waterproof tape. So we take the tape and pretend it's like a basketball. Grab our foam and wrap it around the outside. Cut it off and that's gonna help reinforce that when we go ahead and float soak it so that it's not gonna come apart when it's attached to an armature or if we're using it as a topiary. It's a great way for us to just create something around the outside to help reinforce those forms. One of the things that Floracraft does with Artesia that I'm crazy about is the half sphere. It's great because it's simply a sphere that's cut in half, but so many times we can utilize this as a great base for an arrangement. So it's great that they're already created, dip them in glue, place them into a container. Hey, what a fun way for you to take care of an arrangement fast and easy. Another one is created just especially for the fact that we do so many floral arrangements in mugs. This piece of foam fits down exactly inside a coffee mug. So for those arrangements that you're making for Secretary's Week or maybe for the hospital, great way to use the mug plug. There's also other shapes too. The cake form. We all know about the 1-800-Flowers cake form that we have to make all the time. This form is specially designed to be the same size as a cake. So you can fill it in with flowers and it creates a wonderful, wonderful look. You know, it's easier that way. Cones can be used along with anything. We can use them this way, we can use them this way. It doesn't make any difference. And again, we wanna make sure that we reinforce that cone. So it's always great to go back with the waterproof tape and wrap it around the outside. Wrapping that around the outside of the foam, it's gonna make sure that it's secure. So we've got several placements that are going into this, big roses going down the side, or a whole bunch of little daisy pom-poms. All those insertions are gonna be more secure because we were able to use our waterproof tape. Let's talk about cages. The great people at Floracraft make several cages that are very convenient for you to use in your store. We've got the petite cage and we also have the superior cage. Both have a hook at the top and also the paddle at the bottom so they can be attached 
to an easel, they can be hung on a wall, they can be attached to a hoopah. It doesn't really make any difference what you want to use them for. They're durable and they're available. Even though these are locked solidly, I want to make sure that I throw a little bit of the anchor tape around the outside. Twice around, a really easy trick, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. You don't want that cage coming apart on you during a big wedding. Let's take a look at a couple of the other large cages that they make. The sympathy cage has a flat back, so you're able to set that and use it as a centerpiece itself. They also have a wonderful hanging cage now. It's great because you're able to go in on all sides, including the bottom. That's the secret part that's not available from anybody else except Artesia and the people at Floracraft. That makes sure that you can make stem insertions in the bottom, out the top, out the sides, and even out the back. This is an entire block of foam too, so imagine all the possibilities you have that can create wonderful things in your flower shop. And finally, a couple of things for the really big jobs. We have the double brick that is actually the equivalent of two bricks put together, and we also have our block form, which is a huge four block form. So it's the same equivalent as having four blocks of foam. Imagine this for a great big urn arrangement or some giant masterpiece that you're going to create next week. It's much easier than putting four blocks of foam together. Soak this baby up and drop it into the container. It's important that you know when we've got this baby soaked, it weighs about 22 pounds. So you want to make sure when you're lifting it, you got extra special support and help. We saw a lot of stuff today. A lot of great tools and a lot of great shapes. I also don't want you to forget the great tricks you learn here every week at JTV. Don't forget your tape and supporting your foam with the tape. And also the great labor-saving device of gluing your foam into your container. Those things are the best and that's why you come. We come to find out new fun things together every single week. And that's why I like doing this and that's why I like seeing you back here. <laughs>